Welcome to Wednesday, the 30th day of March 2022. This podcast being brought to you exclusively by Cowboy State Daily. Wyoming's News Authority, visit them at CowboyStateDaily.com and on their Facebook page. Well, the system that came through yesterday is still going to impact us with some cool and brisk, breezy conditions today. Temperature readings are still going to struggle a little bit, and that north wind in many areas will cut right through you. There's also going to be a chance today that there still could be some snow showers for parts of South Dakota, northeastern, far eastern Wyoming, and western areas of Nebraska, as a little bit of moisture is still coming in on the backside of the storm. We've got another Pacific front coming in Thursday and Friday. This will bring snow to the mountains, rain and snow showers to the plains again. The northern areas, mainly Idaho, the Pacific Northwest, Montana, Western North Dakota, you're going to have a frontal system come through Saturday, producing some rain and snow. Then there's going to be a small system Sunday, especially for the mountains of Colorado, that'll bring a little bit of snow. Then a strong Pacific jet stream is going to drive colder, moist air into the northern Rockies and the Pacific Northwest and then the northern plains early next week. So it's a typical pattern for this time of year. We have lots of little systems coming quickly through about every two days. Also, at the end of the podcast, We'll have more on La Nina. Continue to get questions on La Nina, and we'll throw out a few more highlights about where we are with La Nina and where we're going. Satellite photo today shows the swirl of clouds heading into the upper Midwest. This area right here, thunderstorms, some severe developing along the frontal boundary. The low moving into the upper Midwest and the counterclockwise spin. You see the blue there? The blue represents low cloudiness, low stratus clouds, and there are some snow showers in this patch of blue up here, especially up over the Black Hills right now and moving into the Black Hills, this is going to head southeast. So later today, parts of eastern Wyoming, far northern Colorado, western Nebraska, we'll see clouds move back in and maybe some snow showers and snow flurries. Plenty of cold northerly flow coming in on the back side of the system. Now out in the Pacific, we have this little patch of cloudiness right here. This is associated with the next Pacific front coming in. Then another low back up here over the Lucians. This is what's going to be driving our weather as we get on into the early parts of next week with a couple of other weak disturbances back up here to come on later on. The satellite and radar showing the rain and thunderstorm activity here in the Midwest. Snow on the back side of the system. This little patch of snow right here is headed south. It's nothing to be significant or to worry about, but it will come on in. You can see that upper level low right there over the Black Hills this morning, and it's headed due south. There's not going to be a lot of snow with it, but some of you are going to see some snow showers and snow flurries over western South Dakota, western Nebraska, far eastern Wyoming, and maybe northeastern Colorado today. Here's the next frontal system coming in, and as we go into the plains, as these systems head on out, going to be an active day of severe weather. This red area here going to be a hot spot for severe thunderstorms and the likelihood of tornado activity even into these yellow areas as well. And you can see some instability in the atmosphere back here in the west still where we still could see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms. Some thunderstorms did indeed form yesterday in parts of the Intermountain West. Here's the system. This is by noon tomorrow. A frontal system stretches across the Pacific Northwest into the northern Rockies and as it swings through It'll move quickly into the Plain States of Midwest by Saturday morning. This little wrinkle in the flow, this little low right here, will bring moisture to the Pacific Northwest, Montana, Northern Wyoming, and the Western Dakotas, probably sometime Saturday afternoon and Saturday night. As we go and take a look at the precipitation forecast, this is through Saturday afternoon. The front coming in from the north, the front that's going to be dragging through late tomorrow and into Friday, all will produce this moisture that you see here. Not a lot. But we'll see more snow in the mountains. The mountains did receive some good precipitation in many areas yesterday. That was good to see. They'll get a little bit more tomorrow night and into Friday morning. And then up into the northern areas Saturday into Sunday. There's another little low that's going to swing into Colorado as we get into Sunday. And I think the high country of Colorado, Sunday into Sunday night, is going to get a bit of snow. You can see that right here. This is through Saturday. But... As we get into Sunday, there could end up being more snow falling right here in the high country of Colorado as that system swings down to the south. Now, going out further, going to be an interesting set of circumstances in our weather early next week. This is for late Monday night. I want to highlight here this area where the colors are packed together. The reds go to the greens and blues, and you see all these black lines. This tight packing of these pressure areas or isobars, an indication of a very strong Pacific jet stream wind 
driving into British Columbia, Washington, and Oregon. This type of flow drives a lot of heavy precipitation into western British Columbia, into the Pacific Northwest, but also there will be dragging in a good amount of cold, moist air into the northern and central Rockies. And you can see, this is by noon Sunday. Look at this jet stream wind. Very strong jet stream winds span the entire Pacific. And when you see something like this, think of it as a lot of energy built up in the jet stream, ready to do something. So what will likely happen with this strong jet stream wind driving in the Pacific Northwest and Northern Rockies, there'll be an influx of heavier precipitation right here, especially in the mountain areas, late Monday into Monday night. And then what we have to see is what is this jet energy going to do as it hits the Rockies? Will it just continue east or will it buckle and form a trough? And likely when these systems come over the Continental Divide, the dynamics, the physics that happen is, is that you form a wave function and you're going to get some type of low along and east of the Rockies with these type of strong jet stream winds. This is always a recipe for a forecast to go bad. And so we're going to watch things very closely heading into early next week with all of this very strong jet energy coming into Western North America. And you can see it closer in. This is by noon Tuesday. See it digging in and coming on in. This is a big producer of snow in the high country if this develops for the Pacific Northwest and the Intermountain West. And then eventually some weather is gonna develop on the plains and you can see a low forming here east of the Rockies by noon Tuesday. What happens by Tuesday night and Wednesday is a question mark. So we're gonna keep an eye on that for you. By next weekend, by a week from this Sunday, we've got another low coming into the Rockies, another low coming in here behind it. So April gonna start off with some pretty busy and active weather pattern. And that's how it should be for this time of year. A quick update on La Nina. Here continues to show the subtropical waters of the Pacific still showing a weak La, La Nina state, but a very expansive area of cooler sea surface temperatures here across the equator area. So it's just not going away here as we go to the end of March. Now, a little historical perspective, and this is something to keep in mind. If you were to look at the stronger La Nina episodes over the last three decades right here, when La Nina's, this is really when La Nina's got started. We are in the, in the midst of a two year La Nina and this is also periods of time where we've had two year La Nina's. What I want you to pay attention to is the zero line. When you have sea surface temperatures in the subtropical Pacific below this line, you're in a cooler Pacific state or if it's strong enough, a La Nina state. Now this is where we are currently right now. Historically, if you look at those other strong La Ninas, notice it took a while for those other La Ninas to get back up to that zero line. One year that's out of whack a little bit is 1996 when we went strongly into an El Nino. However, that's not likely to happen. So historical precedent sense says it's gonna be a slow process. Basically, it's gonna be early summer before we hit that neutral state using that historical perspective, looking at historical La Nina's that have gone two years. So I guess we shouldn't be surprised that this La Nina is hanging on. And for review, La Nina patterns are a dry pattern for the Western United States, especially the Intermountain West, the Southern Plains, the Intermountain West. It's just a dry pattern because colder sea surface temperatures in the subtropical Pacific mean less water vapor, less water available as these storms come in. And there's a lot of other things that go on as well. And if you were to look at the computer modeling, here's that zero line again. Right now, the general trend in the computer modeling is very much matching up with historical trends, which means a slow decay of La Nina going to a neutral phase sometime this summer. If you were to look historically, going back to the late 90s to where we are now, one thing I want to highlight for you, a lot of folks talking about the drought in the West and how dry it's been, and yes, that's absolutely true. And one reason for that is more often than not, the Pacific near the equator since the late 90s to present has been colder than warmer. So where you see all that blue are the cold phases. Notice there are more colder phases and they're more intense than the warmer phases over the last 20 to 30 years. 
if you were to go back before then, from the late 70s to the late 90s, there were more warm phases than cold phases. Drier west, wetter west, cold phases of the Pacific tend to drive drought more often in the western United States. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. Have yourself a good Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow.